Hey guys, welcome back to the Worldwide Corals Farm. Uh, again, my name is Lou Shivo. I'm here with our director of internet um, wholesale, Frank Lim, and we're going to talk to you guys. Hi, Frank. We're going to talk to you guys a little bit about grafted corals today and how they came about. Um, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. Basically, uh, guys, we want to add a disclaimer that we're going to give you guys um, what we feel is, based on our knowledge and findings, to be true. Um, we're not really trying to put things up for debate and just really share information with you guys is main, our main goal today. Okay, grafted corals. Um, we've been involved with grafted corals dating back to 2009. Um, where we first found the grafted simplex over in California from Steve Tyree, which was the first grafted coral that was found in captivity. Steve mentioned to uh, Steve mentioned on his website on reef farmers that this has actually occurred naturally. He felt like a polypore spawned onto the coral and was able to catch the green fluorescent proteins onto the coral base and was able to spread the tissue was able to take on the, the actual color and spread throughout the coral. Um, it's called the grafted simplex. Then about a year later, we noticed the same thing happened in captivity in our shop. We received a large red Monty cap from SeaWorld here in Orlando. And on there, Victor started finding little green dots occurring after we had in captivity for a little while. Um, and we felt that it was almost the same thing because what we did is we actually started breaking back parts of the coral, the cap, and fragging it. And then we noticed the green would start spreading throughout um, over time. So we took a piece of that and sent it over to Steve for evaluation. And he said it was definitely a, a true grafting. And um, when we went over to talk to Steve about it, he kind of explained to us, like, the main thing that you want to notice is that you can either graft it or you can fuse it. This, the grafting was a true transfer of pigmentation from one coral to another. So it not necessarily has to be a Monty to a Monty, but in this case it was a Pazipora uh, transference pigmentation onto a Montipora cap and a grafted simplex acro. The same thing occurred, the same kind of uh, characteristics, the green streaking. Um, Steve had actually had uh, one of the corals bleached out on them, and when it grew, it got the color back, it actually uh, showed the grafting again. So at that point, we knew it was a true grafting occurred, not just a fusion where you're taking two corals together and let them coexist and kind of grow into each other and uh, form different kind of colorations or different, actually, actually new corals almost at that point, you know, uh, for your home, your home tank. Some can, the Monty's can. I'm yeah. sure some yeah. can. Yeah. But also at the same time, you know, once they grow, if they don't tend to, you know, want to go into each other, they'll just grow apart and they'll just live next to each other. So yeah. a lot of times you won't even see it go into each other and fuse or anything like that. You'll just see them coexist next to each other mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, I don't think it's pretty rare that uh, you see them kind of really go into each other and turn into something else. Um, it's hard to, hard to say, but... I see people doing it with um, fungias. I see people yeah. doing that with fungias, fungias now. Will kind of do that. Now we're doing it with the fungias back there. Mm -hmm. And zoas too. I've noticed zoas. I mean, that's not really a grafting, but zoas kind of can fuse together too. You know, since we've you know come across some of our money caps have been grafted and things like that, and throughout the years we've. Uh, Known that you know we're able to maybe put some corals together and hopefully something cool will turn out. So what we've tried lately was to put some fabias together. Some of the nicest ones that we have here and the ones that we uh, you know enjoy looking at and uh, growing ourselves, of course. Um, ones that are um, what we were would name was uh, the Ultra uh, Micromusa, Ultron Micromusa, or uh, Megatron. Uh, we have a GI Joe. We have a GI Jane. Uh, there's a Medusa Fabia, I believe, too, SpongeBob. and we pretty much, and our SpongeBob Fabia that we have also, uh, we put all those next to each other and uh, kind of placed them in a place where hopefully they'll start to grow and uh, maybe fuse together or, you know, coexist next to each other, of course, and uh, see what happens after that.
The difference between drafting and fusion has been a big controversy, I think, in the hobby. Big misconception overall. And, you know, talking with Frank today, and we've been back and forth a little bit, we're definitely not experts on it, um, but we do know enough to talk about it. Um, and I think you, we both agree is that when you have a, um, a grafting, it kind of occurred naturally, right, Frank? Yeah, I mean, I what we feel is what happens is, you know, you get um, basically other corals that are in the tank right. or, um, of course, and even in the ocean, if a coral light or, you know, that pigmentation mm -hmm. comes from another coral, it'll somehow, one way or another, attaches onto another coral and it'll start to exude that coloration and as it grows, it'll kind of take on that color um, as opposed to, you know, fusing a coral or trying to make it what, what people would say graft. Um, it's really, that's kind of uh, a way where you're actually forcing it to try to do it, mm -hmm. um, which sometimes really doesn't happen at all. It really, it's very, very few that that will actually happen if you put them together and it'll actually turn into like a graft. Yeah. Um, most times it'll just live along the side coexist. and coexist yeah. and live, live, uh, live next to each other and kind of grow, um, you know, basically around each other. But um, the, the thing about grafting is it really has to take on pigmentation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is like a big mystery out there until there's some scientists that really actually go out there and do a lot more research on it. We're not gonna have all the facts. But you know, we definitely feel there is a difference between grafting occurring naturally, which occurs naturally, and a fusion or a forest graft where you're actually trying to kind of Frankenstein a coral together or trying to, you know, produce something, you know, exactly. force force it. You know, not that it's a bad thing, but you know, it's a there's a there's gonna be a margin for error there, you know, because you're actually trying to have two corals coexist and it's not necessarily gonna always take take in that case, you know. I've seen it done with with uh, plate corals, I've seen it done with Akens, now Favius, so Pretty interesting to see what's going on. It's this is like, you know, something uh, new, newer. Not everyone knows about it, you know. But we want to just kind of talk a little bit about it today, show you some examples because we think it's like really cool, and we're reef geeks at the end of the day, just like everybody else out there. And um, different things or new things get us excited in the hobby. That's for sure. Lou, you know what I was thinking also was maybe. I'm not sure exactly, but I feel like maybe lighting and mm -hmm. um, sometimes with the light schedules being off or, um, you know, longer s during certain days, you know, just like with snails and how they spawn, certain corals, how they spawn, you know, with the moon and the light schedules, um, dealing with, with that at home, you know, if you were to mess around with right. it, maybe has something that the corals might um, you know, react with and trigger, mm. and maybe that happened because yeah, of something that happened at home. Uh, maybe the lights went out, uh, if there was a, you know, the electricity was out power or something, outage. power yeah. outage, yeah. and um, things like that could happen, and, you know, the corals react to these conditions, For of sure. course, uh, you know, of course, right away, Spawning across the tank, and, and they stuff might like that. start doing something, yeah. just like uh, you know, fish, and you know, in our tanks too. It's happened uh, reactive, time time. yeah, reactive to and it. So, yeah. you know, these occurrences may have to do with uh, light schedules and what you know, what accidentally may happen. Right, of course. Yeah. Uh, once again, um, signing out. This is Lou Shiva, Worldwide Corals, here with Frank. Thanks for coming out. Thank See you. you guys soon.